Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, where I'm excited to introduce the proud owner of a hatchery much closer to his opponent's base than his own. In the red, it is Shin. And up against the Protoss player, probably the most recognizable and accomplished in the history of StarCraft 2, the Shield of Iron. It stands. With his work cut out for him to start here, it is two separate best of three PVZs. As these players faced multiple times back to back within a few hours of each other. And, uh, well, we might not be here that long if Shin has his way with this Shin right here. As he works his way through the mineral wall, starting things early, just like I like to with begging for likes and subscribes. And Jimmy, what are we... What? 1,289 likes on this series, on this, well, experience. And I'll cast another one. And, and I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better. Stats is almost unbreakable defense is going to be tested immediately. Well, the probe comes in. Hey, wait a second. Well, the wall's already down. He built drones at the proxy hatch. Or, or actually, I think he brought those from home. To mine through. And now there are drones at the bay. This is one of the most convoluted drone rushes I've ever seen. And exactly what I expected when I first saw this map in the pool. But yes, Shin. Well, he's on the pylon powering everything important here. And, well, is it, it, is it over? Stats right now has one adept against 16, 18 Zerglings. The shield battery finishes. The most important thing, Mineral walks the probes through, gets a few of the Zerglings, and he's battling it out. There's a Baneling Nest done. So if Shin does not break through with the Zerglings, Well, huh, that mineral wall, uh, it takes a little effort to get through, but the Bane Links, all coming through one angle here, the Adept, it holds, the battery gets depowered, but the Adept, wow, the battery broke before the Adept did, 12 probes dead, but the Adept with that little slice of battery overcharge managed to survive. Though dies to just a couple unceremonious zerglings by the end. So stats. Manages to hold. He's only three workers down because uh, Shin built essentially none that, that he wasn't sending across the map to mine the mineral wall. The probes are fighting, trying to use every last point of energy on that shield battery. The void ray targets the bane lane. It gets taken out. The probe's on the run, but there's nowhere to run to. A probe! Stand right! And another bane link. The probes live. Three probes down. He's down to ten. But he's not dead yet. Like, literally as close as you could be. But with a void ray, he still has the expansion. Technically, Shin has two bases. But two overlords hanging out here. That's most of the overlord complement. And the void ray takes out two. And now Shin is supply blocked. It, it. Well, has he held? Uh, if you wanted a definition of why he's called the Shield of Ire, Showtime might be the wall, but walls are not something Protoss are as great at building as shields. And here we are. The Immortal pops out at a cinematic timing. But oh my god. Oh my god. I... Those probes. And the, the shield battery. He's losing probes left, right, and center. Every single probe is damaged. Every single probe is permanently traumatized besides just the one. But they're not dead. And another overlord comes wandering in. This is remarkably sloppy. I seriously doubt in any of his practice games, I'm assuming he practiced this, that the game ever went on this long. Uh, oh no, not another one. There's only, he just keeps losing Ovis. If Shin had not sent these Ovi, if he had just left his Ovis at home, I, they would have been harder to defend, but there's literally one Overlord on the map. Wait a second. With those Overlords dying, which he certainly overlooked, puns entirely intended, I think Stats has held, and in fact is ahead 
Because he has two necksai. This hatchery is a liability. Shit, he's building drones and he's trying to expand back. I think he's done it. He's held and he's reestablishing his natural. The Nexus wasn't killed. Shin was going for the throne here, but he gets nothing. Well, he got 18 probes, but for the cost of 50 Zerglings, he's lost four overlords. This mineral wall with the creep here, the stats can't even wall it off, but the void ray, immortal, shield battery, and a goddamn dream. I don't... What an absolutely... Literally could not have been closer. One Baneling, a few Zerglings. Those probes at 5 HP apiece. One Zergling hit. With no shields, of course. But that shield battery. The real MVP. Most valuable Protoss. Shin runs in again. But the Adept? Already pre-shading away. Should be able to get away. He actually cancels the shade. Shin kind of scrambling for anything now. But Stats has taken the worker lead after seven and a half minutes. Well, he had it for the first few, and then it kind of went downhill for a bit, but... <laughs> Huh. Well, yeah, at this point, it's stats as initiative. He has a robo and a stargate against just spawning pool tech. There's a few queens, but they don't have the energy and their the creep spread is lackluster. He had one queen on one base for most of this for obvious reasons. What an immaculate... I don't know if it could have been any better. Like, he had to eat some of the hits, but he managed to mitigate the damage so well. And there was the glaring issue. Oh my god, he walls it off. <laughs> Brings more drones. The two oracles into the main. I was waiting for someone to do this sort of strategy. This has uh, been quite prevalent. Not not to this extent. I'm not looking forward to the ladder now, but is anyone ever? I... Stats walls it off. But uh, mining through these mineral walls, even though they are technically 10 minerals apiece, not five, the uh, counter is lying. It got up to 10 because of, well, you see. And now Stats is just bringing this to a standard game. I do love the execution. That reminded me of a Dark build. Though, I think Dark would have brought spine crawlers or something. Like, <laughs> that wall off at the natural. And... Shin is scrambling. He has a few more drones, but Lair Tech is on the way. There's already Blink in plus one in production. Stats is shoring up his third base. He could go through to the other side. The mineral wall's open. Oracle Micro on point. Slices down a few more drones. And this is a very key timing, as Shin has been on a, uh, a handicap drone count here ever since the start. And 57 to 58 to 56 would be fine if this was a standard game and nothing else had happened and they were both going along their normal tracks. But Stats is so far ahead on the tech tree. And Shin is still building drones to catch up. Which means Stats should have an army supply. Oh. Oh. Brenda, just one more. Oh, this has not gone well. This has not gone well, Lucille. Don't. You don't need to point it out. Spire on the way. Bit desperate. Here come the stalker. Even a probe? Um, you gotta slap down the proxy pylon to make it look intentional. Alright, that probe remembers the battles fought at home. And now they're gonna finally take it back. They will reclaim their homework. Or at least this map. Got a proxy pylon on the way. Even though it takes a little longer to warp in, still better than doing it at home. 
And Shin scrambling to build roaches and ravagers. Plus one is done. Blink is done. The queen pulled off the line. The Void Ray, which has fought so valiantly. 23 kills. The pylon being targeted by some zerglings, but they'll be taken out before they can finish it off. And a second pylon anyways. And stats continues the aggression. The counter strike is looking deadly. More overlords caught in the crossfire. The immortal at the front. Shin does have enough economy to continue the Ravager Ling production, so Stats has to be a little careful about overextending here. The Queens are being drained on energy. The Immortal will be targeted down. Caught out in front, but belongs forward behind. Corrosive Bile. The splits are a bit lackluster, but Shin's starting to bleed out supply. It looks like Stats isn't making much progress, but he's pushed back the creep. He's forcing unit production constantly. The Queen energy is drained. And there aren't that many Zerglings. When the Queens are out in the field, you just don't have the Larva. He's trying to build some more Lings here, throwing some Ravagers in. But behind this, Stats can just continue warping in. And if he juggles those Blink Stalkers well, the shields will remain high. And he'll be able to use them as they regenerate. And beautiful Blink Micro. You see him working his way through. And he blocks over the top. The finishing move. GG. Stats holds with like six probes of HP between them. Even at the end of the game, I gotta go back and see the probes in the main. The survivors. They built this victory on their own levitating backs. And Stats is back. Wow. What? An absolutely perfect defense. Shin? I, I stand by. I don't think the game ever got to the point the overlords were relevant in any sort of practice game. That's one of those strategies that 95% of the time, you either win or you lose. Like, it either goes so well, you just, well, pretty much how it did. And uh, you claim the victory. Or, alternatively... Uh, it crashes and burns, like they scout it and wall off, uh, or you just miss micro. But either way, we go into game two with stats, a convent. Could you stop, sir? Could you not? Shit. What is this shit? Okay, well, so. On Ghost River, you only get one choice of a third base. So if they block your natural then you might as well respond in kind, I guess. I don't... This is another map that is, in kind of the opposite way, quite a difficult one for Zerg, as opposed to Protoss. Of our new map pool here. So, this is a... This is the equivalent of slapping a pylon down. It's a bit more involved, but... He has no intentions of finishing that and building Zerglings, but instead it is clearly denying the base for quite a while. Stats actually let a pylon finish on the other side. On the other side, rather. Um, literally, oh, I was wondering if we would try for the Evo chamber on that little spot of creep. So, where do we go from here? Shin, supply block. So, that, it, it hurts so bad <laughs> to be supply blocked early as Zerg because of the uh, larva mechanic. You can generate up to three larva per hatchery um, before queens come out and provide a, a bit of a, a boost to that. So, every moment you're not using at least one of them, larva is not regenerating. So, you're losing that potential. And that kind of spirals down the line. Which is why supply blocks hurt Zerg dramatically. It's it's also rough um, for Terran and Protoss, obviously. But with especially early game Larva being so critical, uh, you really need to have everything as soon as possible. In order, and that's how players like Serral, and I might just limit it to Serral, uh, are able to get these tiny advantages that add up and just seem to make him impossible to damage. 
uh, or at least do critical damage to. Larva management. All right, right up there with certified public accountant. And not I, I know that's not a small percentage of my demographic. Thank you for your work. Um, but I'm glad I'm here casting mostly players who don't play like that. But Cyril always seems to draw the views. Where was I? I got a little distracted. It seems so did Shin. His Zerglings were chasing down the Adepts, but the Adepts just canceled the shade and went to the third. The Oracle. Is he just going to go for it? The Oracle lights up. Is this worth it, Shin? Like, he's going to kill the Adepts, but at what cost? Nine Zerglings for two Adepts? Huh. They're going to work on the shields, lights up the Oracle again. Shin reacts quick. Moracle's on the way. Zerglings just looking for something to chew on. But at this point... Lights up another one. They're being quite annoying, but Stats understands that this is not a particularly, uh... There's no real threat there with those links. So, getting the gases a bit on the later side, but remember that Nexus was significantly later than usual because of the hatchery block. Oracles come in. Beautiful micro. Gets out with very little hull damage. And Overlord just wandering through to look for the tech. But doesn't find any of it. There's a forge on the way first. There's the twilight. So just following up, we have the Oracle. Adept pressure. The slip and shade. Oracle actually didn't have... It lit up and then burnt out immediately. As it didn't have the energy. Which, a bit of a mistake there. But some of the adepts get through. Two Moracles into the main. Looking for an opportunity. The Spore Crawler, there's no queens here, and the Spore Crawler a little out of position. Gets four drones in general, and Shin, he's building 14. But he was knocked down under 50 for a moment. Is it just going to be the blink again? Indeed it is. Poking and prodding. Oracle's very active without being too risky. And the setup, essentially impossible. Like, well, he will force a cancel on a pylon, which is something, I guess. But stats looking incredibly solid here. And Shin does not, does he even have a roach one? Well, he's building three roaches, so I'm going to go with a yes. Uh... So, Roach Ling is the choice. Ravager Ling, very likely. Bane Ling Nest uh, should be next on the agenda. And the idea here is you need to deal with the Blink Stalkers. And maybe you can turn that around, get a counterattack. But the Blink Stalkers add up so quick. Looks like it's going to be Hydras this time. A little bit higher economy. Definitely more expensive. The startup cost is... Uh, a bit more dramatic, but Hydra is a more reliable option on mass. Assuming your opponent doesn't get splash damage. They do amazing Hydra Ling against Stalkers. But there's already a Templar Archives, a fourth base, and a robotics facility on the way. So, Stats is not looking for just an all-in blink timing here. But instead, filling out the rest of the tech tree, checking off all the boxes on his Prima Strategy Guide. Stats, one of the players old enough to know what that is. Um, one of the few players in GSL older than me, so. The beauty of Protoss, right? Oh, yeah. 10 hydras. Psionic Storm. On the way, blink and plus one finishing stats. Just keeping tabs on everything with those oracles, which have been remarkably active and taken very little damage. He's been very careful with the oracles. Gotta appreciate that. Someone who takes care of his oracles. Storm is rushed out. Shin, on the other hand, is looking to hit. A changeling 
taken down. Stats knows what he's dealing with here. He needs store. That is a lot of Zerg. And he doesn't quite spot the army. It's coming through the rocks. He doesn't... He, he sees the rocks technically, but that's so much. Oh no. He had an idea this was coming, but the storm is not done yet. Fires off a volley. Gets through the cyber core. No more stalkers. No more shield batteries now. But retreats back. There is a stasis. He puts a stasis point blank. Shield battery gets through. Oracle's burning. We'll be taken out by the Hydras. But Shin kind of getting trapped inside of his base. And Stats lands a couple beautiful storms. And is ripping through a lot of this. Does not have charge with the Zealots. Even though the storms are landing, there's still a lot of DPS from this army. Now, Archons pop out. One of them take it out near immediately. The Stalker's doing what they can, but the Zerglings are streaming through. Archon trying to help, but Stats is taking critical damage. Shin just broke through into the natural. Now, the Zealots without charge are tanking some damage. Stats does have a fourth. He's rebuilding probes. Blunks forward to the defense. He manages to... Sh if he hadn't been preparing his defenses at the natural, he may have just lost it there. But at the end of the day, he's able to clean it up. But Shin comes in with another round. He's got just roaches to the south. Stats has a better army composition, but quantity is a quality all of its own. And the lack... He didn't start charge until just recently, and that could definitely hurt him. Going into another round of this. Shin still has 70 drones. The one saving grace for stats here is there is no hive on the way. There's no lurkers. There's no banelings. And does he see the stasis? I don't know if he noticed the stasis or just got a bit lucky there. But the roaches tucking themselves into the mineral line. Stats, does he have enough for storm? It's almost there. Couple seconds. Fires off the corrosive vials. Doesn't hit much. The Templar. There's so many Templar. Hi. Oh, and the stasis catches the roaches, which means Stats can, for a moment, focus his efforts on dealing with the attack at the natural. He will drive it back for now. The roaches are coming out of stasis. The problem was just pushed down the line. And the zerglings are coming around. Another stasis at the third, though. Actually doesn't find anything, but the Templar are shoring up the defenses. The Storms, another Archon, but the supply is dipping again. He's losing probes. Roach is at the back. The fight spread across multiple bases. Charge is done. Incredibly importantly, he's about to finish the armor upgrade. More at the natural. Seven probes down. There's nothing in the doorway. The gates are not enough. A road still going to work. Blinking back stalkers. A natural third and fourth under attack. Stats is trying to hold, but he's losing on all fronts. Twelve probes down. Uh, shit is just streaming through. I think Stats will eventually be able to clean this up. But we have to ask ourselves the age-old question. At what cost? He's down to 57 probes, though he's been continually rebuilding. He has the immortal Archon army. Oh, but the roaches are still in the main. Shin still does not have a hive. He doesn't have any more tech on the way. But he's been whittling down stats more and more. Each of these attacks, the circlings continue to stream in. Now, this main attack with the roaches, there are... There is at least one immortal... The Zerglings are streaming through. Storm finds a lot of damage. Ooh, corrosive miles uh, into an Archon. Not a big deal there. Falls back to the wall. More storms onto the Roaches, melting through. Still, during all this, Stats working on plus three, plus two. Like, he... he even while losing probes, he started those upgrades. And that may be his saving grace. But he has to hold. The Zerg are everywhere. He, he deals with the attack to the south, but the roaches are overrunning the north. Plus two missile attacks is about to complete. Charge lots. Warping in every single bit of minerals of charge lots here. Neither player has money in the bank. He's chrono boosting whatever he can. The upgrades are finishing. Plus two ranged attack finishes for Shin, who's now getting a baneling nest. He's snuck out a few more drones, but stats has been on defense for the last five, six minutes. 
and it will continue at least a little while longer. He's the most important part of staying alive is not dying, and stats has succeeded so far. Like and subscribe for more profound statements. Baneling nest. There's still no infestation pit. As Shin is still looking to end this game on Lair Tech. Oh my god. I shouldn't be alive. The pro lives. That's been the story of this series, though. Go on back down. But get down there, Steve. My name is Greg. Okay, Steve. Stats has the Templar. The Templar will make or break, and or break, this army. The Templar are everything. The Archons are good. The Stalkers are okay. The Immortals are better. But the Storms are required. And the Templar, he needs to juggle them. Or just, you know, back off. He loses an Archon to Corrosive Bile. Baneling's wobbling in towards the fourth. A lot of probes vulnerable there. Corrosive Bile spray and pray across the board. Find some hits. The Baneling's, Baneling's speed isn't done, but it's not needed. The entire mineral line will be obliterated. That's a lot of Baneling. Oh wait, he's not done. He's still going, but charge locks into the fourth. Baneling's roll it in, and they're still chasing, but the Overlords are vulnerable, shit! 29 probes dead. Stats goes on offense. He abandons the home front. It's do or die time. Oh, but the Corrosive Bile's onto the Prism. Knock it down there. The reinforcements blinks over the top. Immortals bashing through from the back line. The Stalkers are starting to dwindle, but the Ravagers are being cut down as well. And look at the supply! The upgrades come through! Stats chooses the attack, and with a single strike, may have broken through. Yes! GG! Shin does terrible, terrible damage to the economy, but Stats chooses his timing and strikes back. The first best of three will go to Stats after a stressful and long-winded defense but we're not done yet. They would meet again, not two hours later. With all that experience, and honestly, one Bane Lane in game one, and one Storm in game two, may have decided it. Uh, if they had gone the other way. But for our second best of three, we'll see if Shin can um, pull something a little bit more coherent together. Just a beautiful, incredible defense by Stats. Shin, his main weakness being the uh, transition to the later game, but still so much thrown at him. I think that's partially the years of experience for Stats. Is, you know, now just imagine a proxy hatch at your natural, Banelings coming into your main, the four minute mark, your unit count is one adept. <laughs> Um, what do you give your chances? Sats is like, well, I have probes and a shield battery, so pretty good. Stargate. Looks like not a, every single hatchery so far is built on Shin's side of the map. Adept shades across. The usual. He's actually okay. That's a lot of. That's a lot of zerglings. The Adept is looking for something like that specifically. Stats has it in position to, to scout for the counter-attacking links. But those are usually the links you try to slip by after the Adept moves out. Not a huge ling all-in, which is what this is. Shin with three for three on all-ins now. 
clearly not wanting to go into the uh, more standard macro. Which, can you really blame him? But the Zerglings have successfully evaded the Adepts. And... This, the Adept was not chronoed. Oh no, the Zerglings get in. The Probe was trying to get in position to deal with it, but it's too low. Oh, the Oracle pops out. It's still a lot of... Oh, more Zerglings. Seven Probes. Where are the Adepts? The other Adepts. Oh, they got recalled back. He loses 12 Probes. Which... For how many Lings? Eh, well, it was bad. But it's certainly not crippling. 27 to 30 workers. It could have been much, much worse. But stats again. Calmly defends. He knows he's going to take some losses and he minimizes those losses. Which, I have to stress, is insanely hard to do. It's so easy to panic. And if you attack move, for example, with the probes at the wrong time, you end up losing all of them instead of half of them. Like, the adepts come in a bit optimistic, gets three drones. The oracle's coming in as well. Two queens in the main. He's still going to go for the drones. Misfires a bit. So now we're seeing uh, small mistakes. just been so used to seeing stats play almost literally perfect from the position he's in like all of this has happened like stats didn't scout perfectly it's almost impossible to scout perfectly at these stages of protoss but once he gets the information he's been making the calls the right calls immediately like and decisively so that is the difference Shin, on the other hand, is, is kind of dictating the pace of the games with his aggression. But that means eventually, once it's stopped, it becomes very difficult to recover economically. Shin is trying to macro it up. The oracles. Please. This is a message from the Hatchery Owners Association, the HOA. If you could please get the... Remove yourself. <clears throat> Karen, stop yelling at the Protoss. Adepts into the natural, but eh, minimal damage. Stats, not finding much. Shin shoring up the defenses. Oracles, driven away from the main as well. Looking for the third. Four more drones total. Twilight Forge. And a spire. It looks like Shin wants to go moot us. I mean, this this wouldn't be corrupt. Yeah, moot us. Trying to circumvent, or at least uh, take the game sideways. You can go mutas against blink stalkers. As stalkers don't counter anything in particular. But... They do rely on an element of surprise because, of course, phoenixes. They gotta be careful with those queens. Oh my god, the oracles. Somehow. They both get out. The spire was not spotted. The queens just have to be very careful not to wander next to it while they're revelated. That was actually the perfect recall there. Infestation been on the way for the first time in either series. Templar, Archives, Robo, Stats, just shorn it up. Looking like uh, he's not particularly confident in any sort of all-in. The, the game won on Amphion. He was so far ahead and knew he had the initiative on the tech, which is why we saw that Blink Stalker all-in. But these last few games, um, clearly, uh, while he's in a fine position economically, it's very risky to be attacking into a Zerg who might randomly have 70 Zerglings for no discernible reason. The highest percentage play is fill out the tech tree, since Shin is clearly, clearly less confident on defense than offense. Just drag the game into that late game composition, 
where you can now play. Mutas into the natural. Did he? S he didn't see the spire, I don't think, but he suspected it. This is an anticipatory set of cannons. Which is a fun statement, but... Yeah, the Mutas will find seven probes, and they'll keep him busy. He's immediately making Hydras and a Lurker Death. I think this is the right call out of Shin. Understanding that those Mutas have a relatively short life expectancy. And try to get as much mileage out of them as possible. The Templar don't have Storm. But the Mutas don't have enough damage. Loses one oracle, but the Templar all stay alive. I love how Stats just builds up his army. Like, he knows what he wants. And he's methodically getting it. <laughs> we'll see. If there was ever a game for the Fleet Beacon sort of Tempest Carrier composition, I'm interested to see whether Stats is going to take the ground route. The more, um, Raynor-style Protoss of Immortal Archon Charge Lot against Lurker, or if he immediately heads towards the Carriers. I suspect we're going to see a bit of skirmishing and then Carriers, uh, as there's no reason to risk taking a, a poor fight. Yeah, there's the Fleet Beacon. There's no reason to risk taking a poor fight against Mass Lurker when you could just go Mass Carrier. The reason you wouldn't go Mass Carrier is if you think you can either beat the Lurkers or your economy isn't quite at the stage where you can afford to go multiple tech routes. But Stats has 76 probes, he's got four bases, and he can meet the Lurkers on the field, so he's not forced to just play defense. So has to be very careful. Seismic Spine's not quite done yet. Lurker range now finishes up. But Stats is playing some aggressive defense. He's trying to zone him off the field. He has Oracles. The Adept at the Wall. The Zerglings are actually on a move command. They're not even attacking it. Beautiful Storms. Stasis across the board. And the Oracle's back at home to defend. The Shield of Iron holding the line. But the Lurkers are now in a precarious position. More Storms to soften them up. Pulls the Templar back. Gets another Storm off. There's not too much left of those Lurkers, but they're starting to chew through the Stalkers. It is incredibly hard not to... But you, it's very difficult to estimate these fights. And also surprisingly hard to target the Lurkers when there's a bunch of Zerg on top of them. But an Oracle over the top. There's actually no other anti arc Oh my god! He's picking up the Lurkers. He's essentially just pulling them up out of the, out of the ground and throwing them back down. I love that with the Phoenix. Such a cute move because it keeps them unburrowed and remo well, it removes them from the ground. Removing the weeds. All right, we got to cut them out. I haven't seen it used to such obvious effect in a while, but that... He uses 100% of the Protoss, okay? Using the Phoenix that he built just to zone out. And how many Phoenixes? He only built the one, so... Oh, no! I was... I was lathering him with compliments! But now... Oh, the Zealots are warped in. And just, like, across the bar to distract the Zerglings, who are surprisingly easily distracted. They were thinking about the Fleet Beacon. A full... Well, you see the mothership on the way. You know, I actually think, even though that was probably a mistake out of stats, he's clearly not letting Zerglings in his base on purpose. I think he turned that into... At least about an even fight, as he killed 30, 40 Zerglings. It's not like Shin is banking a lot of money or larva. The spine crawler is going to stall out. Static defense at the... Oh, this is a huge move. Risky, but potentially game-changing. All the lurkers. Stats somehow missed the entirety of the army. And he used his recall already, so that he doesn't have anything to, to pull back to defend against this. He just has to walk home if he wants to defend at all. Though he has the mothership. He can go for the mothership recall. And he does. What a play. Using the mothership recall. He gets his third base carved out here, though. 
Gonna get a lot. I, I, he wasn't expecting a recall from that angle. Uh, and there's no detection using the mothership cloak. Oh my god. Realizing there was no detection for that moment, forcing the lurkers away. A bit optimistic on the Nexus. But Stats is able to pull it back together with the tactical mothership. Something he popularized against Dark in this same tournament. And here we are again. The mothership coming through, used as more of a support unit. It'd be interesting if you could take out, like, the center and just have the spell casting. Like, maybe the, the core of the mothership and take that out and use that. That'd be an interesting idea, I think. Meanwhile, though, the lurkers will take a massive concave here. But... Well, the Immortals. The army is mostly Immortals for stats. Shield battery overcharge on the back line. But the Lurkers are still slicing their way through. The Mothership is holding the overcharge. Stats pushes back. And a Zealot counter. It's only plus two, plus one on the ground for the Lurkers and Hydras. Meanwhile, stats has 3-2-1, with the plus one being air weapons. Carriers have arrived. Shin has been forcing Stats out of position, but Stats has been responding quickly enough. Shin gets cut down out of that new base. And that's a big deal here, which limits him to only one real fresh base. Stats only has one fresh mining base himself. He actually rebuilt his third, so technically that isn't that close to mining out because he was interrupted for several minutes. 80 to 72 workers, which is about the right number for both sides going into the late game. Could use a few more. Wouldn't be too bad if they had a few less. Two immortals, two carriers. Plus two air weapons on the way. Shin throwing some vipers in, but he has to deal with now the golden armada. The fleet. Viper can pull that entire mothership. Don't ask how that works. Newton has nothing to say about that. Hydra Lurker. There's still Templar involved. This is still an incredibly dangerous army from Shin. It's very easy to mess up this engagement and end up losing a huge amount of your army as Protoss. Oh, the feedback, but it's too late. The mothership into time warp. Well, he, he looks like he's going to try to use the time warp for what it's worth. Shin, you know, Stats doesn't really care about losing interceptors. There's no microbial shroud. He's actually right-clicking on Hydras to target them down. This is not working for Shin. Shin does lose this fight eventually. I guess he has to wait for a few more. He had to make sure that they were actually targeting. So how many interceptors? 54 down. Only 14 on the field. Stats will rebuild them. 19 Corruptors on the way. Which is a much, much more direct response to the carriers. Nine Interceptors at a time tells you how many carriers at least. Another Viper. The carriers, they take about a minute to rebuild from nothing. I think it's eight, nine seconds to build an interceptor nowadays. It's gone back and forth a few times. All right, Hydra's own oh, move command forward. Pretty significant mistake, and now the Lurker count is being cut down, which gives the Templar more opportunity to move into position. Viper parasitic bomb on top of the carriers, which means the interceptors are getting hit by it as well. Tries to get on top of everything, but the corruptors are evaporating, and the parasitic bomb didn't do enough. He managed to keep most of those interceptors alive. I don't know if he was microing them out of the parasitic bomb or if it just didn't find the connections. 
And now Shin just gets wiped from the field. And that looks like Stats again has brought it all the way around to a victory. Wow. Another beautiful defense. Shin had his moments, but Stats just refuses to crumble. Just... It's, uh... It's like textbook Protoss here. Well, Stats was one of... He's If he didn't write the textbook, he's used in most of the examples. As historically, he is the, to my understanding, the second most <clears throat> prize money behind SOS of all time for Protoss. And that's mostly because SOS won a $400,000 tournament that was winner take all. And he did it with proxy gates. Um, because that's how SOS do. But in terms of, like, actual tournament accomplishments over the longest course of time, Stats is the most accomplished Protoss in StarCraft 2. Parting had a lot of success early on and is, uh, of course, very attention-grabbing. MC the same way. Zest? <coughs> you know what? I think Zest might be up there as well. But Stats has been, at least up until his recent military service, kind of the uh, stable backbone of Protoss, the shield of iron. And it's great to see him back. It feels like, well, he's been back for about a year and a half. But last year, 2023, um, five years ago, 2012, um, <clears throat> last year he didn't have a lot of success. It feels like he's finally kind of found his footing again. Um, the meta is a bit more in his favor, like the, the Queen Allens and stuff like that are no longer as dangerous or as common. Thing, even though, well, it looks like stats today could probably uh, handle it. And we're back on Ghost River, by the way. Except this time, it is a little weird. Let me know. You made it this far. Let me know how you feel about casting multiple series. So I'll tell you this. On YouTube, if you cast a series that's 30 minutes, and you cast another series that's an hour, most of the series you cast are an hour, even if you guys all watched most of the 30-minute video, YouTube will still be like, well, people are watching this video less time than usual. Because the video is less than what some people watch in hour-long series. Literally, you'd have to watch it one and a half times. Which even I don't think that's necessarily what, what you might want to do. So, uh, I decided that we should watch multiple series instead of trying to spread it out or watch the same two players face back to back. And I wanted to see all the games as well. So, um, the big risk for me is that a lot of people tune out each game. Not, not most, but a percentage. Um, so in putting more games on one video, as opposed to spreading it out, you don't get quite as many. Like if this game or the next game are the best games, games of the year, all right, of the day then a lot less people are going to see him than they saw game one, which was amazing, though, by the way. So, um, but thank you for... I, I didn't really have a point to that. It was more just a... If you made it this far, well, hopefully you enjoy your breath take. Thank you for watching. And time filled. Oracles come in. The first drone's dead. Classic. But this time around, one of the oracles taking critical hull damage. <clears throat> goes into the Ghost River, part of Ghost River, which, yeah, it looks like one. I do love the aesthetics of many of the new maps. Even the maps that I, I am um, not huge fans of the late... Get off my creep! <clears throat> Sorry. One of the oracles is taken out. Adept's in the center of the map, but the Zerglings will find them. Shin anticipated... And should be able to kill all these adepts off. Maybe one survivor? Just barely. But one queen on the edge. Oh no. Revenge. And then comes in and just pokes down more drones. The adepts. Shade back. I don't know what happened to the other one. I think it died, but. Jammed in. And that's why we put that pile on there. More warpins. And Shin? while he was able to catch and kill the adepts. Stats still holds on to his third strongly.
Oracle's a very finicky unit to uh, really perfect the micro of, as we see somewhat there. Still, though. Rotorn. Oh my. Is this. Ricky? Sir Richard and the Brethren? That, that infestation pit is suspiciously early. I don't think he's rushing Hive. At least it'd be a very odd move. It looks like Shin's gonna try something. It looks like recalling the Oracles. Now, Infestors can be useful uh, against the, the Stalkers as well, but it look, he's banking money. The stalker sitting on the edge of the creep. Shin! Maybe a couple too many overlords. That infestation pit is done. Conspicuously done. He's not building any infestors yet. Did he realize he built an infestation pit? A whole lot of roaches in the way. He's got to deal with the blink stalkers. Stats is doing another blink stalker time. He's got... I love the, the stasis protecting it. The plus one attack is vulnerable here. About halfway done. A lot of stalkers, but not enough to necessarily break through on the creep. Adept tried at the natural. Zergling counter. May deny the fourth nexus. Indeed, it looks like it will. Stalkers blinking back, clearing some of the creep. Dodges out of the way of the spray and pray. Nexus taken out. Oracle comes back to defend just a bit too late. And the Zerglings will continue on towards the third. Stalker's still going to work. Oh, a pylon wall hit. Wow. <laughs> Another spray and pray. So that infestation pit still... Um... Pretty good. Still not sure what he wanted to do with it, but it has been completed. It's just... Nothing requiring infestation, but has been built. So we'll see. As uh, obviously there are more pressing concerns. The stalkers on the edge of the creep. Ravagers dance back and forth. Ravager Ling. Now, the Stalkers, it just, they take so many shots. And they have, uh, do rel relatively long attack speed. Which is why those lanes are so important. Just to kind of muddy it up. The Stalkers do the extra damage to the row. Bane Ling's just, here we go again. Deja vu. Oh, but this time, the Corrosive is landing. He's trying to go through the pylons. Well, that was pretty sad. I mean, Bane Ling's are born to die, but like that. Hmm. So that's keeping the pressure on. Shin has only two more drones, so and he's not really mining from his fourth either. Stats rebuilding his. Plus one ranged attack versus plus one ground weapons. Storm is on the way behind this. Looks like some more banelings are morphing to the southern side. Looking for a counterattack. Baneling speed is closing in. Always funny seeing the uh, slow banes try to waddle in. Plus one ground armor now done. Interesting getting ground armor. Well, actually, he's been he's been investing in it most of the time. It's been paying off. Didn't quite have the perfect warpins for the wall. The proxy gate is taken out, though. Shin starting to stream across the map. As stats invested in a fourth base, he invested in more tech, and he wasn't able to keep as many stalkers up in Shin's face. And now, the counterattack. It comes down to whether there are enough Templar in the right spot to defend. Shin's still not getting a hive. That infestation... If he starts another infestation pit, one... Wag of the finger. Two, I wouldn't be surprised. Because it's been so long. 17 banes on the way. No charge quite yet. 
corrosive bile takes out the rocks. He just can't. <laughs> ah, that repeat rate. Shin at a casual 600 APM stats. Over half that. Barely. That's about efficiency here, and stats has been some of the most efficient Protoss. Oh my god, even targeted the, the roads to the side. But a counterattack again. There's the Hive. There's the Hydra Den. So lurkers seem to be on the agenda. Immortal Archon coming together. Double Lurker Den and Fleet Beacon. Two very different directions for either side. Stats knows where this is going, and Shin knows where he wants to stop him. Ground weapons level 2, about to complete. Gonna be 2 1 versus 1 1. Storm on some of the lings. Corrosive Bile optimistic. <laughs> Slides out of the per. Oh! Not even close. Dodges 20 Corrosive Biles to melt through. Double Lurker down, about to complete stats. Nearly maxed out. How many star- is it- is it literally just for a mothership? He hasn't added any more Stargates. Or plus one weapon. In fact, right now stats needs to lose some supply so he can build a mothership. There's no way that's not for a mothership. That's actually his late game choice here. And I think on this map it's especially useful. But he doesn't know about the attack coming to- this happened before! It'll happen again- oh my god, all the immortals are stuck! or intentionally dancing back and forth at the natural. As the he's like, yeah, that was 100% on purpose. And he fires the corrosive biles over the top instead of going for the, the wall off, which means the immortals will hold. He reshields uh, the pylon and gets absolutely nothing for that. He sees the immortals, he just goes for it. A huge counter. Stats has two armies out on the field. Is there any detection to the south though? And the lurkers may just stop that on their own. Unfortunately, no detection for stats means he has to turn it around. He can join up the armies on either side, plus one air weapon, second stargate on the way as the lurkers are finally revealed. More storms, but the, the lurker count is damn high. Another storm, another Templar taken out. Two lurkers in the mineral line here may just go for the hatchery, trying to dodge the lurker hits. Where are the lurkers going? Meanwhile, more storms. Gets the hatch. Archons may be caught on the way out. No mothership yet. Uh, take it back. Shin, not maxed out, and he doesn't have any money in the bank, whereas Stats has a comfortable army composition with 2k, 1k. And he's smoothly going towards carriers. Shin, clearly not as comfortable at this stage of the game. He's trying desperately to find a crack in the defenses. But the shields hold strong. The Templar finding the storms. The Cyber Core itself is vulnerable, needs revelation. Losing a lot of stalkers at the initial stage of this fight. Loses plus one air weapons as well at the Cyber Core. And stats, a lot of his armies on the other side of the map doing a lot of damage as well. But the main base is vulnerable. The mothership is two-thirds of the way done. The first carrier has only now just arrived. Recalls much of the army from outside his third. Trying to just protect the main. We'll give up the natural. Essentially amputated here. And that leaves... Well, actually, when you think about it, Stat still has three mining bases to Shin's one. So he's given up his natural, but as long as he can hold the main, and he's got storms on the top of the ramp. A tumultuous maelstrom to get through. And I don't think Shin has enough units here to do so. Especially once the mothership is out. He may lose a stargate, but the mothership has arrived. And with, there's no, there's no, there's no detection. With no detection, he could just jump this army. The cloaking should protect everything. And in fact, the reinforcements are being cut off. Stats is outflanking the Zerg. Meanwhile, though, well, Shin's fighting back. Stasis protects some of the retreat. Shin's still on just three bases. 
as Stats continues to march forward. Does have one of those overseers now. He's chasing down the small army. I believe he still has the mass recall from the mothership. If he needs to get the other army out. 55 to 44 workers, but Shin is scrambling around the map. Stats is trying to pin down the lurkers. Takes out the overseer. Falls back. Well, actually, no, those stalkers. Ooh. The lurkers still so dangerous to the ground army. That's why the carriers are essentially required uh, at some stage of the game. Plus three ground weapons. About to complete for stats. There haven't been any upgrades for a while. He does have plus three ranged attacks in here. Three cannons. Take out a lurker. Still working on more. Shield battery overcharge. Going for the pylon. Doesn't quite get it. But there's no more detection over here. For really either side. He cloaks. The overseer's coming in from the northern part. The lurkers will be forced to burrow again. I don't think he, he has an observer with the army. Time warp. Gonna be used. Corrosive bile on the center mass. Actually, maybe kills a Templar in there. More storms. Gotta be very careful with those observers. Another storm. And a single overseer. And Shin is down to 88 supply. It doesn't matter anymore. There's nothing left. Stats. Every single game pushed to the brink. In every single game, he holds and he fights back. It looks like Stats is going to be able to complete a 4-0 sweep of Shin across two best of threes for a decisive, well, losing all of his Templar and his Oracles is certainly not going to help, but the carrier count is too damn high. And Stats holds the Shield of Iron, is fully back in form, and secures his spot in the final rounds of the GSL. Wow. What a absolute masterclass in Protoss defense from start to finish. Shin throwing it at him from the very start, mining through the mineral wall to at the very end, trying to cut into the main. Stats held the line and he pushed back. What a masterclass in Protoss there. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully it made your day a little bit better. I certainly uh, enjoyed that, but... If you do have the means of motivation, it'd be awesome to check out Patreon or your YouTube membership. But I hear liking and subscribing is free for now. And if you haven't yet, checked out the second channel for more content streams. Um, mostly streams, stuff like that. Uh, Winter Gaming TV in the description, right, Jimmy? Uh, otherwise, check out Recommended. Um, that's what YouTube recommends to me to recommend to you for more casts. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you for watching. Stay chill.